Hey guys, Yoshi here. Welcome back to another video. Today's video, I'm going to show you shin shield and overhook. Once you can set it up, it's very efficient position. Then you can easily shift to submission with your opponent's reactions. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up overhook from shin shield half curve and some major submissions from them. Hope you guys enjoy it. Right, shin shield overhook. Let's start with understanding the basic structure. This is a kind of half guard. So I could play half guard like this. Maybe open guard style like this. This is like a Z guard, like Craig Zone used a lot. This one, the bottom leg is a little shallow, like making a hook behind a person's knee like this. But knee shield or shin shield, it's been used a lot by Kyle Teha. That one is like a slightly different. So I get this one real deep, like knee against knee to clamp. Then the top leg, instead of using against the person's top upper body, here. They literally like the name. I want to use my shin instead of using a knee. Kind of used to call as a knee shield like this, but this is a little shallow. This is more like using the shin all the way. As I do so, as you can see that my knee should be outside the torso like this. Then with this type of structure, I can automatically get on my side or I can be belly down like this. This is like a zero or hip cramp sweep position like this. Well, this type of position we want to start with. Then if I can reach his upper body to make grips or control, I can attack. But this situation, he comes forward to smash like this. There's been two ways I can consider. If he stays around my hips like this, this is like the leg weave or wrestler style pass. Once he gets his arm in like this, leg weave. I already show in other video if you're interested in. Please just check the link below. Or other way, even though I have a knee shield, he wants to reach my upper body, like making an upper body control like this. So today, we try this situation. Even though he reached my upper body, as long as I keep the shin shield like this, it's okay. I can still deal with it. Okay, the first thing why I like to do this, I get my arm in like this, then I cut. Then I made a first frame. Then from here, I will see that how he uses the right arm. It's close to my armpit or the shoulder. So I want to trap this one. So if I can find a space, I can do that straight away. But the first thing, it could be difficult to do. That's why I cut the faster armpit. Then look how I pull him to my side like this. I want to get closer to him. Then next thing, what I like to switch this one and slightly open up his elbow like this. I don't need to open completely, but somehow I want to Flare his elbow like this. As I do so, I can find a space to squeeze my left arm in. Just like this. Once I set it up, I want to make the proper overhook position. So here. So instead of copying a partner's biceps, I pass his lapel like this. If you can feel it off, like if you can reach it without using the other hand, that would be great. Otherwise, I want to use your other hand to grab. It doesn't need to be too high or too low. At least around your partner's chest line, you want to lock in it. Once it's set up, you've made your position. Now you shift your attack. I'm going to show you the next one. Okay, from now, I show you two types of attack, like two groups. Okay, the first group is about attacking from a partner's shoulder, like from this angle. Since he gets his head low like this, instead of staying here, I want to start making an angle. The time I do that, first thing, what I have to do is pull my running out. Here, as long as I keep the shin shield, I can find a space to get my right leg out, like this. Then I step his hips like this. This may be a little similar to the Tommy Lanka's key master, like this. Literally, I can use my legs to do leg press. It's pretty strong to, like, a, it's very good at keeping a person's hips away. Once I've done it, I leg with the shin shield. It's going to be coming around here. Look how I step his hips with opening my knee like this. This is really common. Some people like to go, like putting a knee in to step or like a toes that point inside, which is not a good idea to make maximum leverage. This way, like this. As I do so, literally, I can use both of my legs to do leg press to keep him away and pull myself out. This is going to be the hip escape I want you to do. Look how I keep my upper at the same spot or I'm just scoop my hips out. By the time I scoop my hips out, I'm making a sweet spot to submit his elbow. At the beginning of the time, I wrapped around his shoulder. But as I do hip escape, my core 
Well, like, my arm's getting closer to his elbow like this. If I can get in this position like this, just start squeezing into a private pressure, straight arm bar. Then if you're gonna make their stronger frame, like multiple submissions, get this hand in to grab your partner's collar like this. Naku choke. Now I made three frames, using my feet to kick the partner's hips away. Then, with using my right hand, I push his head away. It's getting harder for him to come to my side. Even though he tries to do, it's been blocked with the three frames like this. Then the rest of the part of my body, I scoop myself back to find a sweet spot to finish. So this time, there's been multiple options. Face choke and arm lock. Then I can apply the pressure. Then two of them, it's not a much high rate submission that you can finish it, but you can expect the next action. In this group, his head is low. Like that means we can find a space behind a person's shoulder like this. The first one, I start with a straight arm lock, or the second one, fist choke, or two of them together like this. As long as you keep it head low, we can proceed in action. Then one of major escapes from this position is this. He wants to like a thumb down like this to hide his elbow. If the elbows are pointing the ceiling or that direction, I can proceed in action to finish. That's why he wants to like turn his hand down. Like making a camera shape. Then he can hide his elbow. Once his elbow, the right elbow is pointing this direction, I can no longer finish a straight arm bar since his arm is not straight anymore. But this is a great angle that I can go to the omoplata. It's my favorite. You keep the frame like this, then you just lean back. You want to make one more frame. That's going to be the back of a person's shoulder. So here and here. You need to use your left leg in multiple ways. Use your feet and use your head and tie. After that, overhook is a little in the way. You can let it go like this. Then pass the leg. And like I showed in the other video, car grip is going to be a great way to retain omoplata. The time I go like this, I already have a car grip. This, I can keep his head away, or although he wants to posture up, I can stay connected like this. Then after that, I switch, sit up to finish omoplata. If you want to see further details, please just check Make Omoplata Great Again. I attach the link below. Okay, another way. The last one, I was gonna be able to proceed in action by pouring my leg on bottom, but he does a good job. He's more like a stain, like managed to come back in front of me like this. In that case, it could be difficult to proceed in. There's been two reactions he's going to do. Probably from this position, he doesn't want me to make the angle. Once I can make the fire distance, he's a risk to submit his arm. That's why he wants to come back like this. Maybe he may even drive his head to my left shoulder. Yes, once that happens, I can no longer set up the last two couple of them. Then if I want him to stay here, he can circle his hand out, then he's gonna go out, like thumb up like this. This is a good escape. But some people, when they lash, they do a kind of wrong escape, bad escape. This time I control his upper with an arm. That's why he wants to posture up like this. Once he pushes up, although he can find a space here, he cannot do thumb up escape like he showed you. Can you try that? He can't do that. Probably once the partner pushes up like this, what they like to do is squeeze the elbow in, like this way, like this. The best case scenario, he may be able to squeeze the elbow out like this, then he escaped. Maybe you haven't explained before, but if you know how to do, this is good for me. That's bad for him. Let's try this. So here, he comes back my leg, posture up like this. So once it happens, I even initiate him to pull his elbow out. Can you try that? By the time he pulls his elbow out like this, I don't want to lose his right arm completely. That's why Luca used my wrap to trap his armpit like this. So from here, it's going to be very important to use your back or like a back of your shoulder. So here, since he pushes up like this, he pulls his elbow out. We want to trap a person's wrist with using a lat, like this, you know, this. Then from here, if he turns like a thumb up more, like this, this is a pretty bad angle. The same as Americana. From here, I clamp his wrist and elbow. Then I slightly lean back like this. Sorry, as is a little stiff shoulder. That's why before I make the profile frame, he tapped like that anyway. So here. See, the key to do is using the back. 
You can see from the top view, I rely on his wrist like this. Then this way. It's not a problem to make a gap. Even though he pushes up, we can keep it here as long as it trap this one. Then the plan B, if you want to make it stronger, you can let go the overhand like car grip to this way like this. It looks really brutal. This is Frank Mirlock. The time he tries to pull his elbow out, I make an angle like this. Then I finish. So if your partner tries to pull an arm with pushing up, I don't want you to miss this chance. The only other hand, if you escape from overhead, just be careful. You may have some meeting with this one. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please just hit the like button, give us any comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. Thank you guys. I'll you guys catch you in the next video. Bye. Let me try that. Oh, it's a little cramped. It's my fault.